This is 1.4 intermolecular forces and you see there are two main points here. So the first one is that you have to be able to describe intermolecular forces as van der Waals forces, which are the attractions between induced dipoles and permanent dipole-dipole attractions and also hydrogen bonding. So that would be a molecule containing nitrogen, oxygen or fluorine and the hydrogen atom of OH, NH or HF. Second point is to demonstrate an understanding of the relationships between these attractive forces and physical properties such as melting point, boiling point, solubility of covalent molecular substances. So we start by looking at what an intermolecular force is. They are between neighbouring molecules. So in the last topic we looked at intramolecular bonding, that's ionic, covalent and uh, metallic bonding. So intermolecular forces exist between covalent molecules and there are three main types. So the first type is van der Waals forces and these are the attractions between instantaneous and induced dipoles on neighbouring molecules. So we know that electrons move quickly in orbitals and that their position is constantly changing so at any given instant they could be anywhere in an atom. So if we imagine an atom here with the electrons moving around at any time, they could all end up at one end of the molecule, which gives it a slight negative charge. So this gives rise to a dipole, which induces dipoles on neighbouring atoms. So if you have another atom here, these electrons at this point um, are going to cause the electrons in the other atom to move to the other end. So again, we end up with a slight negative charge at this end, which means we have a slight positive charge here. So we get like a, a weak attraction between the two atoms. So the greater the number of electrons in the atom or molecule, the larger the induced dipoles and the stronger the van der Waals. And we can see this when we compare the boiling points of the noble gases. So if we look at helium, boils at minus 269, going all the way down to radon, which has a boiling point of minus 62. So the boiling point is increasing as we go down. The next type of attraction <clears throat> is permanent dipole-dipole attractions. And they're the attraction between the positive end, the delta plus end of a permanent dipole on a molecule with the negative end of a neighbouring molecule. So an example of this would be HCl, which has a polar covalent bond. The, the hydrogen being delta plus and the chlorine being delta minus because chlorine is more electronegative. So that means the bonding electrons lie closer to the chlorine atom, resulting in partial charges developing on both the hydrogen and the chlorine. And the partial charges on the polar molecule attract oppositely charged dipoles on another polar molecule. So this gives rise to the intermolecular force known as permanent dipole-dipole interaction. Now if we look at an example here um, of how you would draw it, so we have the hydrogen which is slightly positive, the chlorine which is slightly negative and then this dotted line shows the, the bond the weak bond in between them and you see that the chlorine there is attracted to the delta plus on the hydrogen. So these exist in addition to van der Waals and they are stronger than van der Waals. The so molecule will have van der Waals and it will have permanent dipole-dipole interactions if it's polar. So the next type of bonding is hydrogen bonding and it's the attraction between a lone pair of electrons on a very electronegative atom so it has to be nitrogen oxygen or fluorine in one molecule and a hydrogen atom in the neighboring molecule and the hydrogen atom in the neighboring molecule has to be covalently bonded to a very electronegative um, atom such as nitrogen oxygen or fluorine so it's a special type of permanent dipole dipole interaction that occurs only between molecules containing a hydrogen atom bonded to a nitrogen, oxygen or fluorine and it is pretty strong. 
Okay, so a hydrogen bond is a comparatively strong intermolecular force. And you have your electron deficient hydrogen, which is delta plus, and then a lone pair of electrons on nitrogen, oxygen, or fluorine, another atom. So an example here would be the hydrogen bonding in water. So we see here one water molecule and another water molecule. And in this water molecule at the top, the hydrogen delta plus, we have the oxygen then delta minus with its lone pair of electrons here. And we see the hydrogen bond is represented as a little dashed line. And in the second example, we have a water molecule with propanol. And you see in the propanone we have the lone pair of electrons here. So the delta plus and the hydrogen is attracted to the delta minus of the um of the lone pair and the electrons. And again the hydrogen ion is shown as our little dashed line. So how they affect physical properties now. So when molecular substances are boiled or melted, it's the intermolecular forces between the molecules that are broken, not the covalent bonds within the molecules. So when answering questions on melting or boiling point, you must always establish the type of intermolecular forces that are present. So for example, ethanol has a higher melting point than propane. They have similar molecular mass, but propane only has a propane only has weak van der Waals forces, but in ethanol there are hydrogen bonds because of the OH and it takes a very large amount of energy to break these and those are there in addition to the van der Waals. So iodine has a higher boiling point than bromine because it has higher relative molecular mass and it has more electrons than bromine so there are stronger van der Waals forces between the molecules. So more energy is needed to break these. So iodine has a higher boiling point than bromine. And finally, many molecules such as ethanol are soluble in water as they can form hydrogen bonds with the water. And as you know, most organic compounds are insoluble in water. They're immiscible with water. But these hydrogen bonds, which can form, um, occur between the lone pair of electrons in the oxygen and the positive hydrogen of the water.